Welcome to Abacus Tutorials. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to apply a non-uniform pressure load into a structure, in this case, a composite wing. And typically, the pressure distribution will be determined from wind tunnel test data. In this case, we have de developed a fictitious pressure distribution, uh, but I want to point that out so that's very clear. And typically, the lower edge of the airfoil is going to see a higher pressure than the upper surface, which will then cause an effective lift. With that said, I'm going to pass it over to Lifu, who is going to guide us through this particular tutorial. But just keep in mind that we have made some simplifications. Thank you, Lifu, very much, and over to you. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Fun Element Method tutorial. Today, um, Following the last video, we are going to learn how do we apply the non-uniform pressure loading onto the composite wing. So this is a problem we have for the last project. And we just skip it. So, um, so remember last time we applied a uniformly distributed uh, lifting force. And Today, we are going to apply the non-uniform distributed, spatially distributed uh, pressure. This, par this pressure usually is computed from uh, fluid dynamics, uh, sometimes from experimental data. And this is, a, uh, this is a function that represents the coefficients of pressures calculated from experiment or something. And all the values is given here. So it's split into two parts. Uh, before 0 0.2, which if you remember this, before 0 0.2 is this part. We use a quadratic function to represent the coefficient. After 0 0.2, um, we have a linear function for that. And once you get the coefficients of pressures, um, you can use uh, one half of the density times velocity square times the coefficient to calculate the pressure, assuming P infinity is zero. So one biggest problem we are facing here is um, because here, the coefficients of pressure is calculated is a function with respect to the x position. The x position is the relative normalized position for the cross section. For example, this point at, at this point, x position should be zero. At this point, it should be one. At this point, the x position is zero. At this point, it should be one. So it's different with different x and z. So you have you need to have a function that translates your actual coordinate of x and z into the x position. After a simple uh, geometry calculation, you can get the function this, and I simplify that into this formula. You can directly apply this. So finally, the force should be equals to uh, one half times rho sine v square, which is calculated in as this number, multiplied by the coefficients of pressure. So, before we move on to abacus, uh, I just want to introduce you with three ways that can apply non-uniform pressures to the geometry in abacus. First one, first one, and the most generous one is fortune or other subroutine. Uh, this kind of subroutine, um, can this kind of subroutines, uh, is the most general case can solve the most general case for non-uniformly distributed. For example, if your spatially distributed force is related to your time the subroutine can achieve that function. The second one is discretized uh, field, discrete field. So the discrete field is more like simulating different points at different locations with uh, certain values. 
And by doing that, you can uh, numerically simulate a very difficult distributed field. Today, we're going to use analytical field, which you need to have an analytical function for that, for example, this one. So the advantage for that is very easy to apply. And, but the disadvantage is you need to have the analytical function for that. But for most of the cases, it's very hard to obtain an analytical function for this. So I'll show you uh, uh, just a little bit about the Fortran code, which is the subroutine one. Since we don't have the Fortran compiler, so we are go not going to apply this method. So, so for example, uh, this is a subroutine for deload, distributed load. So for distributed load, uh, you can obtain the coordinate x, y, z, and time here. And you can enter whatever distributed you want, distribution you want, like for example, x equals to velocity times time, which means your distri force distribution has something related to time and space at the same time. So, but this is not what we need to focus on today. So let's go back to Abacus setting. So this is the geometry we have for last from last time. So um, basically, uh, we are still using static here, and but however, just to make it simple for the next step, we for the next project, uh, let's do nonlinear analysis here. So this is used for large deformation. So together with um, the geometry will change a lot and the formula will be totally different. That's why uh, this is applied. So when this is on, usually, first of all, it takes time. It cannot be finished in one step. And secondly, it's not uh, necessarily to converge so the way we do it is first, we put a very small increment at the very beginning. And if this is converged, then Abacus will start increasing the step uh, until it reaches one, which is means the ending state. And this minimum, sometimes we need to set it smaller so that uh, for some small changes, for some changes in between the steps, um, we won't need to be as accurate as enough. That's why we decrease this one. And make sure that your nonlinear geometry is on here. And the other difference is we need to apply, we need to apply pressures to Sorry. We need to apply pressures to the entire geometry. So the first thing I want to say is this formula will only works when your origin is at this point. So, but if you go back, you can see the origin and the coordinate system is not as what we shown in the presentation. So we need to rotate the instant and also translate the instant until the origin is here. So to do it, uh, we can look at this direction. So Z is horizontal and X is pointing uh, to the, from the tip to the base. So right now X is horizontal, Z is pointing the other way. So we need to rotate uh, clock, clockwise by 90 degrees, which means uh, in the assembly here, use the rotation and it should be rotate about Y axis. And then it should be clockwise 90 degrees means minus 90 degree counterclockwise. 
And then the next step is we need to make this point as zero. To do it, first click OK here to make sure it's, rotate, it's rotated. And then in the translation tour, carefully select this point. And then we're going to select the origin for the coordinate system. So this is, this is what we want. We want Z and X in this direction. Now go to the load. So we need to put this analytical functions into the analytical field. To do it in the tools analytical field, you can see that I already put four of them now. So I will create the last one, which is upper leading. So the upper leading, I mean, this formula, when it is smaller than 0 0.2 is the leading edge of the width. So let's input this X position first. So it should be bracket 59 times a Z plus 50.36 times x, click this z and x to insert the variable, divide by 109.15 uh, plus 22.28 times x. Copy all of that. That is your reference x position. So we, we're going to input the first formula is minus 139.98 minus 139.98 times x square. So to enter x square is our POW bracket, whatever x position here, and then dot two. This is power of two for fortune. So then we plus 40.46 times X position, and then minus 2.42. Uh, I think one of the brackets is not correct here. Uh, let's double check which one is wrong. Times z plus this times x divide by 109 plus, oh, sorry. I forgot to have a multiplication here. It should be times x. Same thing here, times x. Copy the new one. So if you enter it wrong, it will give you the warning. So don't worry about uh, doing it incorrect. Same thing here. This is the, for the second formula. You can directly copy and paste the exposition expression here. So it will make it easier. So make sure that all of that is finished and then we can assign the load. Originally, we have this pressure applied to all the bottom surface. Now we can suppress it and create our new pressure by leading top. Should be pressure, and then it should be applied to zero before 0 0.2 of the geometry, so which is this two, and it should be on the top surface wrong side. And the magnitude for that, I already put it here, 10, uh, 106, 67.6. And then the distribution choose the upper leading. And then create tail 
And then choose the rest of the top surface. You can zoom in and choose it. Make sure that you didn't choose the wrong surface. Otherwise, it will give it will give you some report some errors. Wrong surface. This upper rest and then. One zero six six seven. You can copy this one and then create a leading bottom. Select the bottom surface for leading edge. Brown. Lower leading. Select a tail bottom. Lower rest. So you can see the distribution here. Uh, so for the bottom, you can see the lifting pressure here. And for the top, although it shows some arrows, it's actually very small. And then finally, uh, well, we don't need to change a mesh. And now we can run the job. And we create a new one, call it um, uh, non-uniform pressure. And we can submit this. For nonlinear analysis, usually it takes longer, and you will see some something different here. And I'll show you if I find it. If you feel like uh, it takes you so too long time, you can actually decrease the mesh size. It may be too fine here now. See, it starts from zero point one. So one tenth of the total simulation. And it keep increasing. When it reaches one, it means 100% finish the simulation. If it is converging fast, then the step time will increase automatically. So you can see the step time is 0.15 and the total time becomes 0.35 here. Here, although it says time is more like a percentage, so this is 35% finished. You can see one U here. One U basically means it attempt to use 0.225 for, for analysis, but you find out that it won't be convergence, so you need to decrease. So you can see the next step, it suddenly decreased to 0 0.05 and it is converged. And now the total time becomes 0 0.4, or you can say 40% finished, 49% finished. So if the step is too large for nonlinear analysis, the solution may not be converged. Now you can see the step time becomes 0.12 again, and the total time is 0.61. So 60, 
about 62% finished. Eighty percent finished. You can see that nonlinear analysis actually take way longer time than linear analysis, and it has a problem that, at some specific loading condition, it may not converge, like with a very large increment. So, first, the thing is, you need to set your minimum increment small enough. And the other thing is the initial increment, you cannot make it too large. I start from 0 0.1 here. You cannot start from one, otherwise probably it will take longer. So uh, if you feel like this procedure takes you too long time, you can always decrease the mesh size. Decrease the mesh size will make each step of computational faster. But on the other hand, sometimes it cannot be converged that easily. So it has a force and uh, it has advantage and disadvantage. Now let's see the result. So basically it's like this, well, we can see displacement. So displacement, there's no too much to see. This is a displacement we have. You move up by uh, 0.6 meters, like around two feet. So, um, and the stress distribution, you can see here, the stress distrib distribution is more random. It's not that linear anymore. It can be anywhere you, you want, it can be any locations. This has two reasons. One is because your loading is not uh, uniform. The other is the geometry is nonlinear. Now let's see the pressure, P low. This is a pressure that applied to the geometry. You can see that basically it has a pressure at the bottom. Oh, let me use on the form the shape. So this is on deformed the shape. You can see basically uh, the top is almost zero here. It's very small at the green region. And the bottom, you have those pressure applied to it. And the pressure will give you a, a, a lifting force for the entire wing. This is how we apply a non-uniform distribution to the to a shell element or something. So now I just want to quickly mention how how does the other two uh, works. So the other one first is the discrete field. Discrete field, you can create a discrete field by applying a different node or different elements or you have orientations here or pre prescribed coordinate. So you have, you're interpolating this force by different sampling points. That's how the discrete, discrete field works. And for the deload uh, subroutine, when you create your job, when you have your fortune code in the general, you can actually input your subroutine file here. But make sure that on your computer, you have the compiler for the fortune. Otherwise this cannot be this cannot work. So that's it for today's uh, today's tutorial. Hope that you have learned something from this video.